All right, good morning, everybody. If you pay careful, close attention, I can pretty much guarantee you an easier day in math than yesterday's investigation. Welcome to Math Lesson 51. We are all about multiplying by two-digit numbers today. And some of you might be going, oh, I don't know, Mr. Heinz. That doesn't sound easier. But two-digit multiplying is just two separate multiplying problems added together. So if I was going to ask you to multiply 51 times 32, well, there's not a student in this room right now who can't go 51 times 30 if we do the old dangle the zero trick, right? And I know for a fact there's not a student here who can't go 51 times 2. All you're really doing is taking these two answers and adding them together. But just when we do the old dangle the zero trick, we always have to add a zero at some point, don't we? So let's go and see what this algorithm is going to look like. And I wrote a little reminder up here because 98% of the time, there's two big mistakes. Either kids are being too sloppy, or they sometimes forget to write a zero before you multiply by the digit in the tens place. So I got done saying that, treat it like two separate multiplying problems. And so right now, we're not even going to look at the six right here. All I'm going to concern myself is just starting like we always multiply in the ones place, right? So let's kick it off. Let's go 3 times 7. Everybody knows that. That's 21. So I'm going to write down my 1. I'm going to carry my 2. Next up, I'm going to go and do the digit in the tens place. 3 times 8 is 24, plus 2 more. Hey, that's 26. Are you with me so far? Everybody can do that. Now, my advice, and this is where I fight fifth graders every single year, go and erase your carry numbers up on top. That way you won't make any sloppy, silly mistakes. And now, let's concern ourselves with the six. But before we do, he's not really six, is he? He's really 60. So just like we have to go and add a zero when we dangle the zero, let's just start off because he's really 60. Start off by writing one zero right below your other multiplication answer. Now let's start. 6 times 7 is 42. I'm going to write down my 2. I'm going to carry my 4 this time. Now I'm going to go 6 times 8 is 48, plus 4 more. That's 52. So I have two separate multiplying answers. Here is the answer when I multiplied 87 times 3. Here's my answer when I multiplied 87 times 60 because I had to write in a zero. I have two separate answers there, right? What do you suppose we're going to do with those two separate answers? Well, we probably only want one answer in a math problem, so let's go ahead and add those guys up, should we? 1 plus 0, hey, that's 1. 6 plus 2, that's going to give us 8. 2 plus 2 is 4. And nothing plus 5 gives us 5. For a grand total of 5,481, there's only four digits here, so I don't have to write it with a comma. And when you're writing in four-digit answers in Socrative, don't use a comma for four-digit answers. 
So let's go ahead and try this one again. I'm trying to multiply $1.47 times 23. Don't even worry about your decimal point and dollar sign. That's going to come in last. Don't even worry about this 2 to start off with, right? Just think of multiplying by the 3. So let's start off. 3 times 1. Hey, that's 21. I write down my 1. I carry my 2. We've been doing this for weeks, haven't we? Multiply by the next digit. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 2 more. Hey, that's going to give us 14. I'm going to write down my 4. I'm going to carry my 1, right? And my last digit up, I am going to go 3 times 1 is 3, plus my 1 more is 4. It's not a tough concept, but neatness is going to be so important. Again, the big bane of my existence every year is kids who want to scribble on top of these carrying numbers. Go ahead, use an eraser. Get everything cleaned up so you don't mess up the second half. So we just got done saying, though, there's really two digits here, right? Now I got to go and multiply by this 2. But he's not really 2. He's really 20, right? I mean, I could even go and write in my 0 if I wanted. As long as I knew that I have to write in a zero here. Because he really wasn't a zero, was he? Okay, I'm ready to start multiplying now on the second half of my problem. Let's kick it off. I'm going two times seven. Hey, that's 14. I'm gonna write down my four here. I'm gonna carry my one, just like I always do. Next up, I'm going to go 2 times 4. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 more. Hey, that makes 9. And my last one up, I'm going to go 2 times 1 is 2. So, I have two different multiplying answers here, right? Let's go ahead and add up our two answers so I now get one answer. 1 plus 0, that gives us 1. 4 plus 4 is going to give us 8. 4 plus 9 is 13. I'm going to write down my 3, and I have to carry this 1. And now 1 plus 2 gives us 3. Stop. We are not done yet. Remember, this is a money problem. So just dollar sign and decimal point in the usual old places, giving us $33.81. The secret is don't forget to write a zero before you multiply by the digit in the tens place. One more here. We're going $2.44 times 22, right? Should I do a little bit about covering up, or are we comfortable enough just to know we're not dealing with this digit yet? We're going to start over here. 2 times 4, that's going to give us 8. 2 times 4 again, that's going to give us 8. And lastly, 2 times 2, hey, that's going to give me 4. I have nothing to erase this time, right? Don't forget, write a zero before you multiply by the digit in the tens place. And I know on paper you can't really make this digit disappear, but you could go and cross them out if you wanted to, just to keep yourself in track. Say, I already multiplied by this two, I'm never going to use them again. But don't forget about writing in that zero. So let's go ahead for round two of multiplying. I'm going to use this digit in the tens, please. He's two also, but I'm going to start 
over here. 2 times 4, yeah, that gives us 8. Next, I'm going to go 2 times 4 again. That's going to give us 8. And lastly, I'm going to go 2 times 2. That's going to give us 4. Here is the digit when... Here is the answer when I multiplied by 2. Here is my answer when I multiplied by 20. Because I had to write in a 0, right? Take your two answers, and we're just going to go and add them together. 8 plus 0, hey, that gives us 8. 8 plus 8 is 16, so I write down my 6. I have to carry 1 over here, not to the top of the problem. I'm just carrying it up to my answers. 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 8 more gives us 13. I'm also going to carry this one only this far. It's just carrying to the adding. And 1 plus 4, that gives us 5. But I'm not done yet. This is a money problem, so dollar sign and decimal point in the usual spots, right? Two places behind a decimal point. So that's not too bad, but I got one other thing to show you. And I want to talk about what's called the distributive property. When you distribute something, you're just handing it out. Every single day, about 1230, I distribute snack to you guys, right? I just hand out the snack. So the distributive property is all about handing out, distributing. And because they are really going to want you to be able to show two different ways to multiply at times. And we already know right now, or we should know, that you do the work in parentheses first. This 25 times 10 plus 2 in parentheses, yeah, Mr. Hines, we're really talking about 25 times 12. So when they're talking about two different ways to multiply, that would be one of them. You could multiply it up 25 times 12. That's one of the ways. But they are actually pretty dead set that they want you to be able to show two different ways. And here's where the distributive property comes into play. We're going to be handing out this 25 to every one of these numbers in parentheses. We're going to go 25 times 10, and we can go 25 times 2. So how are we going to write that? With parentheses, we'll go 25 times 10, because I'm handing out 25 times to each one of those guys in parentheses. So close out this set of parentheses. Multiplying by two digits is all about adding two different answers, right? So don't forget to put in an addition sign. And I'm also distributing 25 times over to 2. So we need another set of parentheses and we'll go 25 times 2 and close out your parentheses when you're all done with it, right? Because I absolutely guarantee you we could multiply this out. 2 times 5 is 10. I'm going to write down my 0. I'm going to carry my 1. I'm going to go 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 more. Hey, that's 50. Mr. Hines says always erase your carry numbers at the top, right? He also says always write a 0 before you start multiplying. But I'm done multiplying by that too. So now I'm ready to start multiplying by my next set of digits. 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times 2 is 2. 
Last step, add these two sets of answers together. 0 plus 0 gives us 0. 5 plus 5 is 10. Write down my 0. I'm going to carry my 1. And 1 plus 2 is 3. Welcome back to second grade. So this guy says 300. Let's try it this way. 25 times 10 in parentheses. Well, we should know that. That's 250, right? Plus, let's go and combine our other set of parentheses terms. 25 times 2, that's 50, right? And now I have last two sets of terms to combine. What's 25 plus 50? Hey, isn't that 300 as well? They're getting you ready for the next step in algebra. The good news is... You won't run into it until next year. So they are going to start getting you ready for that, though, because we're going to run into one of these every single day for months. And it's going to say things like, Danielle wants to multiply 12 times 20 plus 3. And then they're going to demand that you show two ways that she can do it. Well, let's do what we just saw here. So 20 plus 3 is really 23. So one of the ways to show it is just go and multiply 12 times 23. That's not tough at all now, right? 12 times 23, because we now know how to multiply two-digit numbers. The other way, remember, they want us to go and use the distributive property. So they're going to want us to distribute 12 times over to the 20, and we're going to distribute 12 times over to the 3. Are we ready? Start with some parentheses. 12 times 20. That's easy enough. Close out your parentheses. Don't forget silly mistakes like that. And two-digit multiplying is just two answers added together. So don't forget an addition sign. Let's go and do the other set. We're also distributing 12 times over to the 3. So we're just going to write 12 times 3. And I'm not going to bore you by multiplying these all out again. I absolute guarantee that if you set it up correctly, you will have the same answer in each one. So that is the end. Hopefully it wasn't too painful. I promise something quicker and easier than Investigation 5. But you are so going to want a piece of scratch paper and a pencil, maybe a multiplication chart, to be successful in the Socratic quiz. Good luck.